Okay, let's talk about fairing. So I have this 2015 Yamaha Bolt. May look like a Harley Sportster to many people, but this is Yamaha's take on a cruiser that's around a thousand cc's. For those of you who came here to just watch the install, I will put the timestamp in which you could watch the, the installation just for that. But for those who wanna understand why do I even put this huge chunk of plastic on the bike? Let me just give some context on what it actually does for you when you're riding. So it's pretty self-explanatory that with cruisers, more often than not, you're gonna be going down highways, you want them for longer hauls than your typical bike that's gonna be bopping around town. Now, while this isn't a huge, enormous Harley, it still is nice to have the capability to go on highways which comes into play with the wind. Wind, when you're riding, is not fun. If you are new to riding, or if you haven't gone on long hauls above 100 miles, wind really just beats you up. When you're going on trips where you're gonna be touching 65 miles per hour plus very consistently, the buffeting, the wind pushing on your body, and you just being this human parachute, it doesn't really make it for a good time, right? So this is why the use case comes up with these fairings. It's not just to look like Jax Teller in Sons of Anarchy, even though I think it looks pretty nice, but it depends on the person, right? I do it for the look of it. I do it for the functionality of it. And so that's generally speaking why people look at these and want to install them. For those who are wondering, the short answer is that I think this modification is more than worth it for the function itself. So whether or not you like the look of it, Purely based off function, I think that the amount of wind that it takes off my body and my head while I'm riding is more than worth it. Sometimes people talk about wind buffeting, where your helmet is getting hit with wind in a certain way to kind of make it vibrate or shake a little bit. And it is somewhat present, but it's so minute that it doesn't really bother me while I'm riding. And it's more than worth it to be able to put up my visor and ride 65 miles per hour consistently and not have to worry about the wind at all while I'm riding. I think it's more than worth it. And if you have the $100, $200 to spare to do this on your Yamaha Bolt, maybe look into it. One final last thing I wanna go over before talking about the installation and going into that specific to the Yamaha Bolt is what does this cost, right? And the answer is, is that it's gonna really just depend on the aftermarket that you have for your bike. So if you have a Harley Davidson, there's a huge aftermarket for most Harley bikes and it's gonna be pretty straightforward. You will be able to find almost an OEM fit for your bike for a fairing, as long as you're willing to pay give or take three to $500, depending. This setup is retrofitted, meaning I took a fairing that was technically not built for the Yamaha Bolt, and I was willing to make certain compromises that I'll show right here. With that, I was able to do a, a really cost-effective solution in having a pretty solid setup in the bike for $120, give or take, and some radiator hose cost. It was more than worth it in my eyes, and it was a fun little project to do with my brother and my dad. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the installation. Okay, so I wanna keep this install as straightforward as possible. The face Tim fairing is gonna be linked in the description below so you can know what I have. First thing we're gonna start with is the headlight setup. You're gonna to have to take that off, really straightforward. And that's gonna bring us to our first retrofitted part, which is going to be the mounting system. So that's where the radiator hose comes in. And you can see that there's gonna be four different cuts you're gonna to have to make to extend the diameter of the mounting brackets that come with it. This is a visual representation of what it should look like when it's mounted up. One thing to keep in mind is that this is gonna be a fixed system. So meaning you won't have a quick detach to be able to pull the fairing off easily. You probably noticed from the freeze frame that I relocated the blinkers to the lower part of the forks. That's where the wiring is gonna come in and you use 16 gauge wire, you'll need three on each side and a little bit of soldering work and it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Now the spacing that I picked is pretty much because it still clears the suspension travel on the front, but it's a good balance of not pinching the connectors on either side and that's why I have the spacing that you see right here. The next retrofitted part is actually fitting in the light housing to the fairing itself. You can see that we had to actually use some masking tape. That's probably gonna be the best method you can get for using a Dremel. You're essentially cutting out the hole as much as you need to until the entire housing can fit through. This is part of the compromise, right, with 
having a retrofitted part. Some people want it to be totally flush with the light. I was okay with it being spaced inwards just a little bit and it doesn't look too bad in my opinion. And outside of really basic installation parts, this is gonna be it for the install of the face Tim fairing on my 2015 Yamaha Bolt. I hope this was really helpful and gave some good information to the people who are looking in the marketplace or just wanted to understand what a fairing is. I appreciate you watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one.